Not everyone could believe in the death of the royal family and the execution of all the children of Nicholas II and Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna. So egregious was the incident. Literally a couple of months after their death, imposters began to appear here and there, calling themselves Tatiana Olga, Maria and even Alexei. There were about 230 such survivors around the world. However, the most stable legend was that the youngest daughter of the royal couple, Anastasia, managed to survive. The most famous imposter was a woman named Anna Anderson. Nikolai and Alexandra passionately wanted to produce an heir after three wonderful, but still girls. However, Maria, Olga and Tatiana have a new sister. Anastasia was a very joyful, creative, mobile and mischievous child, adored pranks, and often got nuts for tricks. Gifted and quick-witted by nature, she was sometimes restless and lazy, but few people could really get angry at the kind and life-loving giggler. And like the refined Olga and Maria, Anastasia was distinguished by a down figure, and in the last months of her 17th birthday, according to her mother, she got fat at all. The little princess inherited the shape of her face from her father from her mother she got a good bust and a thin waist. At the same time she resembled her grandmother Maria Fyodorovna with individual facial features. On the night of July 16th to 17th, 1918, Anastasia, along with her sisters, brother and parents, was shot in the basement of the Ipotivsky house. According to the official version, Anastasia's remains were buried in 1998, but not all researchers were convinced that they belonged to her. An attempt to identify the remains of members of the royal family and their servants was carried out until the 2000s, when scientists had doubts about the fragments of several skeletons. As for direct witnesses of the execution, members of the firing squad, in particular security officer Yakov Yurovsky, claimed that absolutely all members of the royal family were killed that night. However, there were also those who claimed the opposite, according to a certain person who lived opposite Ipati's house. The younger princess managed to escape and hide in the neighborhood. But for the birth of a legend, such evidence was not required at all. After all, faith does not need proof. For the first time, the girl, who later called herself Anastasia, became known on February 17, 1920, when a Berlin policeman removed a woman from the Bendler Bridge who threatened to jump into the water. Later, an unknown woman, who did not have any documents and identification marks, was taken to the police station, where she said that she decided to take a desperate step after a cold reception at the palace, where she went in search of relatives, namely Aunt Irina, Sister Alexandra Fyodorovna. The girl gave the impression of a city lunatic, and therefore it was decided to send her to the hospital. There she was diagnosed with exhaustion and a tendency to bouts of melancholy, and for security reasons she was placed for treatment in a psychiatric clinic in Daldorf. A little later, in March 1920, the family of a certain Polish Franciska Shanskovskaya reported the girl missing. This is the name, according to most researchers, was worn by a mysterious unknown woman who tried to jump off the bridge that February night. She was born in 1896 in the Prussian city of Posen on the border with Poland, which at that time was part of the Russian Empire. Her family was engaged in agriculture, but the young Franciska showed real aristocratic manners. And although the family was not very well off, the girl tried to impress the person of aristocratic blood, kept to herself and avoided physical labor. Her niece Walter Chanskovskaya later recalled that her aunt was the smartest child in the family and dreamt of escaping from a small town, becoming an actress, and getting a chance at another life. In 1914, she left her father's house and went to Berlin, where she worked as a waitress, found a groom, but did not have time to get married because her chosen one was called. After learning about the death of a young man, Franziska, who was working at a military factory at that time, accidentally or intentionally dropped a grenade from her hands, which killed the head of the shop and wounded the girl herself with shrapnel, leaving her with scars on her body. After that, the girl was declared insane and sent to a psychiatric hospital, but she never managed to fully restore her health. Franziska suffered from pain, swallowed pills and was practically unable to work. Her further fate was unknown to her relatives, since in February 1920 the girl disappeared. 
At the same time, an unknown woman, taken from a bridge in Berlin, was in a clinic where she was diagnosed with a depressive mental illness. She refused to introduce herself in any way, was withdrawn, and did not make contact. The only thing that the doctors managed to find out was the presence of a strong oriental accent in the patient, from which it could be assumed that the known Fräulein was a native of Prussia or Poland. According to the nurses and nurses, the girl probably understood Russian, but she did not speak Russian. The girl spent 1.5 years in Daldorf. It is not known exactly at what point Anna fell ill with the fantasy that she was the heiress of the Romanovs. Presumably, this happened by the grace of her roommate Maria Poitert, who claimed that she used to sew dresses for ladies-in-waiting of the Russian imperial court. She also noticed similarities between Anderson and the daughters of Nicholas II when she saw a photo in a newspaper under the headline Is One of the Tsar's Daughters Alive? Later, it was Poitert who tracked down the former captain of the Imperial Cuirassier Regiment Schwalb and convinced him to visit the Anderson Clinic for identification, then Schwade showed a photo of the girl to Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna, who saw no resemblance to her granddaughters. However, Schwade himself, being in doubt, attracted Alexandra Fyodorovna's old friend, Zinaida Tolstoy, to the case, who, after visiting the patient in the hospital, was convinced that it was one of the princesses, probably Tatiana. Subsequently, Tolstoy begged the sisters of Nicholas II to recognize the identity of the girl and help her in any way, but received a sharp refusal. Nevertheless, the legend was voiced and received wide publicity in emigrant circles. Since then, a string of visitors has reached out to the patient with a rich imagination, among whom there were many persons of aristocratic blood, each of them trying to get to the truth. Among them was Baroness Isabuck's captain, who saw the royal family as one of the last. She assured that, despite some external similarity of individual facial features of the patient with Princess Tatiana, she was definitely not her, Anastasia, or any of the other daughters of Nicholas, the immigrant environment, interested in the case of Anastasia, split in two. Some considered her a miraculously escaped princess and offered all kinds of help. Others declared a real war on her, wanting to bring the imposter to clean water. Among the high-ranking supporters of Anna Anastasia in different years were members of the imperial family itself, in particular Grand Duke Andrei Vladimirovich, the grandson of Alexander II, who said that before him, without a doubt, Anastasia, and Xenia Georgievna, the great-granddaughter of Nicholas. I, however, both of them later refused to help Anna, and this was partly due to her obnoxious character, noted by many contemporaries. The clearest vision of the situation was formulated by Duke Dmitri of Luchtenberg, grandson of Grand Duchess Maria Nikolaevna, daughter of Nicholas I, who justified why Anna could not be Anastasia. He noted that she did not speak Russian at all, but she spoke German perfectly, while Anastasia did not know this language at all. Secondly, the impostor did not know the Orthodox rites and behaved like a Catholic in the church. He further noted that all Anna's supporters somehow had selfish intentions and were interested in recognizing the girl as a princess. He also quoted the testimony of the Yard's lifelong dentist, Dr. Kostrisky, who made Casts of the impostor's jaw and admitted that the drawing of the teeth was not similar to the drawing of the real Anastasia. Olga Alexandrovna, Nikolai's sister, also took part in Anna's fate, who oh. corresponded with the girl for some time, presented a gift, and even visited her personally, but completely lost faith in her hopes. In 1928, Anna moved to the United States, where she is under the patronage of several wealthy people, but her inappropriate behavior and seizures again lead the girl to the hospital. Her condition worsens. Nevertheless, Anderson has patrons even after her discharge from the clinic. In 1932 she returned to Berlin again, and in 1938 she ran into the Shanskovsky family. Some recognize her as a relative, others doubt it, but in the end, none of them ever signed a confession that the girl presented to them was Francisca. Probably one of the reasons was that the authorities of the Third Reich threatened to put Fräulein in prison for fraud if she was recognized as an impostor. In the same year, 1938, the official Anna Anderson trial against the Romanovs began in Berlin. The woman claimed the inheritance of the Romanov house, of which about 
$100,000 remained in foreign assets at that time. In this case, Anderson was assisted by Gleb Botkin, the son of the last life doctor of the court, who was shot on the same night as the royal family. Opponents of Anna Anastasia's theory were convinced that a conspiracy had formed around the woman, and its participants tried to get their hands on the Romanov's funds through her. They declared Botkin a fraudster who fed a sick woman with stories and used her for her own selfish purposes. Several trials were held, in total. The proceedings dragged on for almost 40 years and ended in 1977. The result did not satisfy either side. The court found insufficient evidence of Anderson's possible claims to inheritance, that is, it did not recognize her as a princess, but also did not confirm that this woman really was not Anastasia Romanova. As a result, the situation remained unclear. Opponents of the theory of Anna Anastasia claimed that all the impostor's knowledge about the royal family and the details of her life that she allegedly recalled were inspired by the sympathizers around her. On the other hand, the hype around the woman's personality and the presence of high-ranking supporters at various moments who recognized her as a princess only fueled the faith of those who hoped for a miracle or just wanted to enrich themselves on this story. After the death of Anderson, who died in the United States in 1984, scientists were able to conduct a DNA examination. The woman's tissue samples were compared with the DNA of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, a relative of Alexandra Fyodorovna's grandmother. It was his DNA that previously confirmed the authenticity of the remains found in 1991 in the Porosinkov Lob near Yekaterinburg. The Results of the examination showed that Anderson was not a relative of the late Empress. At the same time, her DNA matched a sample taken from Karl Moucher, the great-nephew of Franziska Shanskowska. Thus, the point in the investigation of this complicated story was put only at the end of the 20th century, when with the help of science it was possible to establish that Anderson was actually Franziska Shanskowskaya.